Tyler Hollinger is an owner and event producer for New York City's only farm to bar cocktail. It's called Festival. He is also the owner and creative director of High Life Productions, plus he's an actor, comedian and filmmaker. Tyler, first of all, welcome and you're in my favourite city on the entire planet. How does it feel to be that lucky? Well, I, I'm just glad that we're still somebody's favourite city. <laughs> New York, <laughs> New York's catching a rough one right now. Look, Festival, um, you really opened at probably the uh, worst time imaginable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The food and cocktails on the menu sound delicious and uplifting, but I'm just wondering about, I, I, and I understand that you go through a process to open, but when COVID happened, couldn't you have put it, put it back maybe a few months or did you say, no, we're going to do this, we're going to get through this? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of these decisions were made well in advance of COVID. Um, you know, we signed the lease like a year ago today. So there were certain certain legal obligations that were in place with the landlord, with our purveyors, with a lot of different parties where, you know, we had a confidence in not only myself and the people behind us, the people behind the scenes, the talented people who are part of Festival really are the are the stars of the operation here. I'm just the one driving the ship. Everybody else from the mixologists to the chefs, to the front of house, to the back of house, to our dishwashers are really the people who are doing the great work here. And mm. it's a testament because not only has the neighborhood supported us, but New York City has supported us because this is this is something true. It's something of value. It's something of substance. We are providing a very high level of food and beverage, not just in the way you would think from a culinary standpoint, but from a health standpoint as well, everything we serve here is local farmed. It's local sourced. We support local purveyors. People are waving at me on the street. <laughs> local local people who are your local farmers. This is wholesome, organic, fresh, healthy ingredients that we're serving. And healthy stuff is exactly what everybody needs right now. And nobody's talking about that. What inspired you to do this? Was there a market for this sort of um, restaurant and bar or did you after a few too many cocktails one evening with the wife think, <laughs> look, my life is really good right now. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a rocket up my backside and make sure that I really live. Well, you know, the, uh, the, really the impetus is this, I, you know, we produce a, a festival called Secret Summer and it's a thousand person cocktail <clears throat> festival that happens every year in New York City. It's been going on for seven years now, and every year it's sold out. A thousand people come. We serve the freshest cocktails on the planet. There's music, art, food, games, dance. It's, it's a whole awesome day of fun, and we've really built quite the following because of that. Mm. So we transitioned that model into a brick and mortar that you can have year-round whenever you want from a culinary perspective. That's really the impetus behind all of this. And that's really, really what started everything. So what's wrong? Let me tell, ask you this. What's wrong with Mayor Bill de Blasio and Governor Cuomo? They've made it though really hard for business. And now you have to shut down at 10 o'clock for New yeah. Yorkers, 10 p.m. Well, it's just the start of the evening. So you, you have this beautiful restaurant you're riding on the back of this festival. You've, you've called it festival. You're going to have great cocktails, you know, yep. a bit of New York living at its finest. And then we have the party poopers, Cuomo and de Blasio. But I mean, you know, what are they what are they on about? Well, I, you know, I think the idea is here is that, you know, they're worried that too much extravagant partying leads to COVID which I certainly haven't seen that data happen. I don't, I don't know why the, all of this is related to alcohol to begin with. Apparently de Blasio and Cuomo think alcohol gives you COVID, which that's a crazy bag of nonsense. <laughs> After 10 o'clock, COVID and alcohol, it it's just, insane. it's like, well, it's, it's terrible. It's insane too, because they're, they're taking these policies and they're blanking, blanketing them to all businesses. Mm. Don't get me started on, on gyms. The one place where you go to keep your body healthy, to keep your immune system strong, mm. they're trying to shut down. And what gym is crowded at 10 o'clock? That's insane. Mm. Secondly, 
if you limit the capacity of people to dine at 10 o'clock, then all those people who wanted to come later are just going to come an hour early. So you're putting all those people on top of all the people who are already there during that normal cur cur course of the evening, and you've created an even worse crowding situation. So it's even harder for the business owners to keep everyone six feet apart, to spread it all out, to keep everybody outside in the middle of winter, which is doubly difficult. But here's the thing with governments. I mean, uh, Dave Rubin once said, governments are great at coming up with a solution for the problem that they've created in the first place. Now, uh, do you want to hear do you want to hear something insane? De Blasio was like, oh, I got the solution. I'll just let everybody have propane heaters on their restaurant sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So he signs this legislation, this executive order. I look like a hero. I've solved the problem of winter, except the FDNY doesn't agree with it. So in New York City, to have a propane heater, it has to be 10 feet from the building, and it has to be five feet from the building and 10 feet from the street. Well, the sidewalks are only 12 feet wide. Look, New York's a city of amazing communities, block by yeah. block yeah. by block. Did de Blasio and Cuomo think by creating fear and panic New Yorkers would start to dob in their neighbours in by calling 311, which is the I'm going to dob in on you line. I don't know. I, originally, 311 was like if you see a crime happening mm. or, or if there's a homeless issue, uh, you know, or if there's like a safety issue, like, like something's hanging from a scaffolding, call 311. Now it's become the tattletale line. And mm. anyone who has a problem with any other New Yorker calls 311. So individuals can call 311 on businesses and then the government will show up. Mm. And it's really funny because they come on a regular basis here like every day just because people don't like Tucker Carlson or people don't like me. Or they and like they, your cocktails though. Maybe they like the cocktails. Maybe they do. And then they come, they show up mm. and, I, and I talk to the government agents and I say, I say, okay, who complained because I want to file a complaint on them. And they go, oh, well, it doesn't work that way. And I go, well, don't you see the hypocrisy in that? Mm. Do they care? No, they don't care. They don't care. In your neighborhood. They're just, the people who show up are just people who are just doing what they're told to do. And frankly, that's the worst part of everything, that nobody, nobody stands up and says this is wrong. Do you think that's the end game here, is that governments now have worked out a way of getting you to do what they want you to do? I'm not going to speculate on, on hypotheses. I just think that people are in love with power mm -hmm. more, that, more that, than they're in love with love. Mm -hmm. And if you accept love, if you love your neighbor, if you respect your mm -hmm. fellow person, you don't have this gigantic power grab. In your neighborhood, how many restaurants or bars have just gone? 75 percent wow it's 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 bleak will it's they bleak. come back will it's they really come bad. back do you think they'll ever come back no 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 they won't wow we've heard much about the devastating impact of restrictions on new york restaurants and businesses what about visitors are they coming back to the city or are they just petrified <laughs> we're not going near the big apple for a while the big apple has a worm at the moment you know i don't know it's it's interesting because we get visitors from everywhere mm. and people come here. We're very busy here. We're lucky. We're so fortunate to be so busy here Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's difficult to even get a table at festival during those, those, those dates because everyone appreciates so much what we're doing. And I think we're really starting to reach people. Mm. As someone who lives and works in uh, New York, tell us about how the city feels at the moment. You know, I don't know a single person who approves of what de Blasio and Cuomo are doing. I speak to a lot of people every day in the cafe. I'm here 9 a.m. till 11 p.m. And I speak to a lot of people. Nobody is, is happy with what the government is doing. So I don't understand how the government is able to keep getting away with this. What about in, in uh, speaking of uh, governments in Victoria, the Victorian government, you know, as I mentioned before, they locked down the city and it was locked down for about, you know, the Melbourne was locked down for about, you know, all of about five months. Um, 
But the guy that's running it, which is uh, Dan Andrews, his popularity is about 70%. I mean, maybe de Blasio is actually thinking, hey, this looks pretty good in Austra Australia. <laughs> we might try it ourselves. I don't know. I don't know a single person who really appreciates mm. that they're doing a good job. Everyone I know hates them. It's a mystery to me. Is this the same feeling throughout uh, New York or your neighborhood, or is it just some of us radicals? No, nope. no, I think that we're the majority mm. feel this way. Mm. Like, I don't know a single person. I haven't spoken to a single person who's like, Cuomo and de Blasio are really doing a great job. They're not. What support is available to your business from? Zero. So there's none? Zero. There's none. There's no support from the state or the, or the government. There's only fines. You know, the first piece of mail I, I, I opened when when we opened our doors, the very first piece of mail was a tax bill for our liquor license for eight hundred and sixty five dollars. They're fining businesses in New York City for staff not wearing masks to the tune of a thousand five hundred dollars. If we violate the fire department of New York's policy with the propane tanks, they can fine us fifteen thousand dollars. So then how do you focus on recovery in, in the future? of your business. How do you move forward? We move forward because we have such a strong community. We have a strong base of individuals who don't care what Cuomo and de Blasio think. They come and support us because we are serving the best cocktails in New York City right now. Well, they look delicious, but I'm here. I'm, I'm like a long way away. So <laughs> and I really don't like virtual testing or taste <laughs> testing. All right. So no, thank you. But New York, it's got this l vibrancy, this life about it. The yeah. people are you know, straight down the line, but they're very warm. People, New Yorkers are very warm. Uh, yeah. Tell you how it is. Will that ever come back or is that gone? You know, what, what's, the, what's the story? No, it's, it's still here. It's still here. I mean, New Yorkers do the coolest shit on the planet. They do. And I've been, I've been to a lot of cities. Paris, very close second. Um, I, I want to go to Australia soon, very soon. I've never been. But, um, you know, New Yorkers are really fucking cool. They and, are. And, you know, we're resilient. Mm. We're survivors. This is the city of 9-11. This is the city of, you know, the financial crisis. Mm. New Yorkers are survivors. If you want to come to Australia, let me tell you two things. First of all, Australians don't move their lips when they talk, all right? We just talk, uh, yes. we're like a Jerry G doll, but I wonder where the hand is. Uh, the, 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 the second thing is our margaritas. What, what do you charge for a margarita? Just need to ask you that. I'll tell you what we charge for our margaritas here. What's a margarita worth? Well, um, it's a, that's a good question you ask because not all margaritas are created Equal. Uh, exactly the same. Our margarita on the winter menu is actually called the vaccine. And it's a margarita <laughs> variation on a, uh, a penicillin, which is a, a classic drink uh, with uh, lemon, honey, and ginger. Oh. And so we have a lemon, honey, ginger margarita with sesame washed verde mezcal, Casa Dragones Blanco, and, and, uh, and uh, turmeric. Wow. So it's a $15 margarita, but with any good vaccine, multiple testing is required. <laughs> but see, your margarita is a bit too fancy for me. I mean, the it's standard very, margarita, you know, a bit of the that the the uh, triple sec and, and uh, some ice and tequila and squirt of lime. Here, this that thing in a fancy glass, by the way, a fancy glass. In Australia, you're looking at about $22. Wow. So, wow. so uh, your, your $15 for all the fancy $15. bits. $15. It's just yeah. it's sounding stunning. I'm, I'm my, my lips are getting dry thinking about it. <laughs> Look, where do you see the future for New York? Do you think you'll get out of it soon? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I see this wrapping up very soon. Um, a lot of cities in, in America are going through a second sort of lockdown phase. Um, the vaccine that they've come out with has a 90%, uh, you know, effective rate, which is exceptional. It's it's amazing. And uh, I really think that's going to be happening very soon, maybe the first of the year. Yeah, uh, or, or January 20 when Donald is... Just go uh, outside and help somebody needs. 
Yep, it's uh, it's an amazing, uh, amazing city. Um, your politics are amazing. Um, who knows what's going to happen in the um, in the, uh, the in the next few months or few weeks or yep. few minutes? Anything might happen, but New York will never, ever, ever change. It's a city that just doesn't sleep. What do they say? The city with no pity. City with no pity. I like that. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Pleasure. Tyler, thank you very much.